Studios Podcast 63 with Nana Finesse. Hello, hello. In the building. Thank you for coming out. Of course, no problem. From San Jose. Yeah. We staying in San Jose right we now. We staying in San Jose right now, which is a good area to stay. I've been in San Jose before. I like San Jose. I like downtown. I don't know if downtown's different. Yeah, I've I've been there for about two years now. I think mm. it's all right. Okay, where would you come from before that? Uh, originally, I'm from the Inland Empire. The Southern, Inland Empire, yeah, Southern California. Southern California. Oh, you are here from SoCal. Yeah, I moved to the the Bay Area, like South Bay, uh, Mountain View, East Palo Alto area. It's a very was, rich yeah. area. Yeah, but I'd be back and forth. All my family's still in the. Got eye. you, got you. Uh, so, are you had business out here in the Bay? You're for schooling or? Uh, yeah. When I first moved out here, I was three. So I really pretty much grew up in the Bay Area, mm. um, and now I'm out here for business. My management's in SF, so. Okay, and you're and doing I, the modeling, right? Yes. And, okay. I first saw you at the 1015 management show. Yes. Um, there was an event going on. I wasn't there personally, but a lot of my people were, mm-hmm. uh, and you were popping up on the social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a great event by Big Rich. Yes. Uh, I know he was putting a lot of artists out there. I thought you won. <laughs> <laughs> I hit you, but I, I hit the wrong person. But I'm, gr- I'm grateful that I hit you. Right. Uh, you're doing amazing with the hosting and stuff. How was the event? Uh, are you talking about the recent event? The, the contest? recent event, yeah, the contest. Oh, it was dope. I mean, I feel like my management always puts on a good event, but I was actually pretty blown away by how organized and just professional and it was lit. A lot of people came out. A lot of up and coming talent. Oh yeah. yeah, and people of all ages. Um, There's a red carpet, which was dope. Lots of photographers. You know, my people are always putting people on, so it was cool to just see the upcoming everybody there. Right. And the contest was actually really dope. They had a lot of cool artists performing. What was it, like a like a playoff format, or did everyone just do a song? Or Yeah, so they had, like, practiced the whole uh, contest for months. Uh, basically, they had up-and-coming artists in this contest, and whoever wins, they had judges, mm-hmm. whoever wins um, won 10K in the contract. So, yeah. I've seen that. I've seen the advertisement for that. That's big. Yeah. One of the girls won. I knew one of the girls were going to win as soon as the girls started getting on stage. I knew that was going to happen. So, wait. So, how many artists performed? I think there's like 10 of them. 10. That's yeah. only? That's it? Yeah. I mean. Wow. It was it was kind of a long time. I had left early. I had to get back on the road. But Got you. It was dope. They had a lot of um, cool guest judges. 24K Golden. It was like one of their original signees. Yeah, yeah. Twenty four K Golden was actually uh, part of um, Big Rich's uh, group. Yeah. Or development group. And, yes. And came Project up through level. that. Mm-hmm. So that was awesome to see Twenty Four K Golden kind of yeah. make it. Now he he's made like it. platinum or yeah. gold, like multiple. Yeah, super big single. Yeah. Um. And he's still young. And from the Bay mm-hmm. through his process. Which is crazy because th- that doesn't get talked about enough. A lot of artists complain about the Bay. There's not enough opportunities, but countless artists are blowing out up oh, yeah. and stuff like that. I think with the Bay, it's like we're very competitive people. I think there's a lot of people who want to see us go big, but there's not a lot of support. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like um, even like my Instagram, like um, for example, I'm in a Playboy com- campaign contest right mm-hmm. now. Okay. And I just made it to group finalists. So I've passed five rounds. And I didn't think I was going to get that much support from people, considering my following isn't as large as it should be. So I was actually very happy to see that people were. That's not always the case, though, right? Exactly. It's, so it's, the, the whole purpose of that platform, I'm sure, is to find up and coming talent. Yes. They have Project Level, which is like a developmental program that they've had for years now. Um, and then they have 1015, their management, which is, you know, people that are signed to their management. How, how did they find you? Sorry. Um, so I actually kind of found them. Um, one of my old homeboys, from I knew him since I was like 14, I always told him, I was like, you need to be a runway model. Right. And I was like, you're tall, you're handsome, your features are beautiful. And then years later, he, um, I seen that they were working with, you, you know, he was signed to their 1015. And I just ended up being around them and um, always getting advice from Danielle and Rich. And then one day I was kind of like, like I want to be a part of 1015. Like, I'm not playing around no more. So I wrote Danielle, like, a huge email, like, stating why I deserve to be part of 1015 and this and that. And it took about a year before I got signed. Um, they just wanted to see me work. Usually when, like, you're – about to come up with them, they want to stay. You, they do like a thirty day probation period, mm-hmm. and you got to put out as much content and creation as you can. Well, I had put out like forty different contents, like different contents in that thirty days, which means I'm posting 
multiple times a day. Um, and they seen that. So I was doing a DMAC music video mm. about a year ago. And I had just took a couple flicks before the music video started. And uh, Danielle um, commented on the photo. She was like, uh, DM me now. Like, I see the vision. Like, we're good. Like, it's set. And I met with her, like, a couple days later. Everything was set in stone. So I've been rocking with them since. Look at that. So yeah. <laughs> people feel like you have to do a whole production around your shoot, right? You got to have a video guy there. You got to shoot a highlight, all this interaction. And you don't. You don't. I tell people all the time, especially my engineers, interns, artists I've developed, you have to post your life. It doesn't necessarily have to be, like, hella beautiful. You just got to post what you're doing. Because when I right. see that... It makes you feel a certain way on your couch. Mm. You, and even though I'm super <laughs> active, right? I'm out right. there too. I'm right. out there too. Uh, yeah, making we out moves. here right now. Making people feel funny. But it's like you feel funny when you're not in motion in that particular moment. Oh, yeah. And then you see someone like yourself at a video shoot. Mm -hmm. Looks very exciting. Oh, looks yeah. like you're talking to cool people there. And mm -hmm. here I am eating a bag of ruffles. I mean, know? yeah. That's how. I mean, I think that. If we want to get deeper into that, like, that's just how social media is. Like, people post their best selves on social media. I do, you know? Yeah. I mean, I haven't. You know, I put some topics we can get into later. Right, but okay. the majority of people on social media are posting to make themselves look good, whether that's the life they're living every day or they're right. just living it in the moment type, right. type shit, you know? Right. And, yeah, so, yeah, when you're just at home... You know, you just waking up 10 a.m. You might think that's <laughs> early, but people are getting a head start at 6 a.m. Doing a motion. Oh, let me get my ass up, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always didn't dress the best for social media. And I just know if I did, it would have dramatically helped. Because when I did started dressing better and, you know, just showing stuff off, it, right. it helped. Uh, it dramatically helped. Oh, and yeah. I didn't do it before. I was trying to be real or whatever that right. was. But it wasn't a good tactic or campaign a lot of my artist friends would just dress up and they dress up really nice just to come mm -hmm. to the studio and i didn't get it like why are you dressing up that right because nice? you don't know who you're going to meet in a day right it's your vision well, I it's think your visual social media is also a show for sure you know what i'm saying like show. you show. are putting on a show yeah whether it's real life or not you want to look your best i think that's people what people are drawn to it's more real life than tv though and i think that's why mm. a lot of Kids who don't watch TV, who look at social media, get that out of it because it's like with a show. I can't watch shows because I actually end up knowing like how writers think. And writers are oh, yeah. freaking weird nerd people. Oh, I'd be predicting movies 20 minutes into okay, the movie. So I know how it's going to play out. So it's just like normal people who write. And I'm like, okay, I'm just watching something that's in someone's head. Right. This is all made up fooey. I can't right. watch shows like when they say, oh, you got to watch Guardians of Gox. I'm like, no. no, I don't, I don't know. But like. Social media, they're real people. So mm -hmm. even though it's put on a little bit, yeah. they still had to go buy their own wardrobe and right. do what they did to, to present it. Right. And it just, it looks I better. mean, no, though. I know men who share watches and clothes. I've seen uh, guys pass stack the same stack of money so that they can post it for the social too. media. I mean, there's a lot of buffoonery on social media, there but you is. are right. It's your face. It's your life. You're the one recording it. You know what I'm saying? So there is... A real to it. Yeah, I've seen that behind the scenes. And well, so the younger, so I think it's like evolution because the younger mm. generation does it better than the older generation, the buffoonery right. part. Yeah. Maybe not, but I agree. They, they seem to know, you know, mm -hmm. by let me borrow this stack of cash or whatever, but it works. It works. It works. <laughs> It definitely works. But when you're seeing it behind the scenes, you can't help to go like, oh, yeah, these, these people are trash. Yeah. It's, you know. it'd be it's something to laugh at. I never really showed up because I just made a good work ethic off it, like social media because I do the events. Mm -hmm. I have the recording studio. Right. Um, so I feel fulfilled in that, in that mean. Right. Good. But I, I could tell if I wasn't doing that, if I worked at like Home Depot, I would feel like I need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just seen a post today where uh, this is getting passed around right now as we mm -hmm. speak. All these rookie posts. It said, um, you be thinking of girls out your league until you walk into Taco Bell and she's on shift. And yeah, and it's real though. There'd be some cute ass girls at Taco Bell. Though. Right. I mean, I'm not going to, I don't, I personally don't job shame. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? As mm -hmm. long as you work in paying your bills, good for you. However, 
You know what I'm saying? A lot there is a lot of people out there who are not living the lives they present on social media. Right, right. Which is fine. Men and women though, right? Men and women, Men for and sure. Women. They're both doing it. And they're both yeah. they both seem more lonely. Yes. You know, I know a lot more women that are attractive now in my era, which I'm mm-hmm. pretty old. They would try to find a guy to get with, right? Right. Not in this era. They are completely entertained. They do not. Oh, yeah, Starbucks. Yeah. They, <laughs> Love my Starbucks. Yeah. They they completely have social media. They're completely on their phone doing this. Yeah. And you see it through their social media. They feel completely, I don't know what the word, advocated. They just, they don't feel like they need a man in their life. How old are you, by the way? I'm 20 mind? years old. Okay, so you're at this right age of asking. So. Oh, yeah. Do you feel that? Well, you don't feel like you need a man, right? Like, um, does social media vindicate that a little bit? Or I, are you in a relationship and you don't go toward the social media route? Like, um, personally, I've been on social I media. Mean, social media is my generation. You know what I'm saying? I think I had Instagram since I was like in the sixth grade. You know what oh I'm saying? God, don't even know how to wild. spell certain words. You were words. on Instagram on the sixth grade looking oh, yeah. at it? That is horrible. I've had, I mean, when I was uh, 15, I had 20,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. And that's, that's a little like yeah. weird, isn't weird. it? And then it got too much for me at one point because I was like at that age where it's like, okay, I'm a minor. I'm young. I'm not just a minor. I'm 15. You know what I'm saying? So it's, were you getting DM'd at 15 as I a I was minor? getting DM'd from all verified accounts. Yeah. Grown ass men. And, it, and, and because I was um, at that point, I had just ended my athlete journey. I was a D1 athlete. And I got injured. So I was barely starting to like you know, get into this, like, pretty girl era, you know, but I'm still a girl at this point. Right. And so I started taking hella pictures and posting them, but I've always looked older for my age, and that's nothing I can do about it, you know what I'm saying? Whether Mm -hmm. I wear makeup or not, I was still, people thought I was 24 at 14, like, random people in the mall. Right, okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, that takes a toll on you. Yeah. Because then you're stuck in this moment where, okay, I'm trying to start my modeling and social media career, but I'm getting DM'd by a bunch of grown ass people that could put me onto opportunities. So do I tell them I'm 15, or do I just rock with it and and hope they don't care? You know what I'm wow. saying? You know what I'm saying? It wow. puts you in a weird position. I know what you're saying. Women have to navigate more yeah. than men do. I often worry. Did I say something to leave that relationship not intact? Women have to be like, I have to leave this guy thinking a little bit that right mysterious. That is such a weird thing for women to it's feel like they have to do in order to navigate through an industry, though. Right. Like, dating, whatever, yeah. but, like... And it, at that point, career. it got too much for me, so I deleted the whole Instagram, which sucks, because that shit would have had 100K by now. Like, where I'm at right now, I would have had 100K. But you did it morally, right? I did, I'm very big on morals. Right. Huge on morals. But so you saw there was this weirdness about it. Was it was too much, you know That's what I'm really saying? That's really weird. Yeah, I had just, a... At 15, you're, you're like... Trading Pokemon cards, damn near right. Like you're still a kid. Something I mean, I like just that. I I remember me being a 15 year old kid. I don't remember have moms looking at me, which probably wouldn't I mind. But it'd be a little creepy though. Yeah, like old ass 36 year old moms looking right. at me as a 15. And I'm in right. like baseballs. You know what I mean? Right. I and a lot of times guys don't ask your age. They don't care. And even if they do ask your age, best believe there's a lot of guys that don't care. Yeah, even when I was 15. So it was kind of, I felt like I was kind of uh, put in a really weird predicament at that time. Was it a certain type of person you noticed, or was it just all walks of life? Was it like verified accounts too? Verified, rappers, producers, celebrities. I mean, I was living in the IE at the time that this really started going on. And I was living with my stepmom and my siblings, my half-siblings. And so I found myself, you know what I'm saying, Sneaking out the house to go link with rappers and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But at least the rappers were like yeah. 18, not, you know, but that's still bad. Like when I think on it it's, now, it's I'm bad. like, that's out, but. It's just on that line of, uh, It's a very, yeah, thin line. Because in high school, when I was in high school, it was kind of, uh, to see a senior dating a freshman. Oh, yeah. But you've seen it a lot. Yeah, you've seen but it. But you're like, that's just, this is the same thing. It gets normalized. This is a little weird. Yeah, I mean, when I was 15, my first boyfriend was 18. I was 15. But it's normal in high school. It's normal. Well, the high school can pr- protects you legally. So this is what I see, and I'm just going to, this is probably a clip. Like, yeah. in high school, it's this weird thing, right? Because, like. 
you <laughs> I don't want you to sound fucked up. No, but like, you're good. You see these older guys that couldn't get girls their age necessarily. Yeah. They're a little cool, so they went and got the really cute girl that's 14 or 15. Oh, yeah, that's freshman. exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Not nah, uh, my boyfriend. And I think it's just weird. I'm like, that is creep, yeah. you know? Like, but. My uh, boyfriend at the time, my ex boyfriend now, he uh, told me that um, there was. Like a bunch of group of guys, seniors, juniors, super seniors, you know, like the 19 year olds that are repeating senior years two, three times. Then you got the uh, graduates that come back during lunch and the the security got to kick them out type shit. Wow. Uh, Telling me to be careful of that man. What? Um, Wait, graduates coming back? Yeah, during lunch. Yeah, to go scout for girls. That's just real. But, anyways, they, um, my ex boyfriend told me during this time, he was like, yeah, there was a bet out for you to see who's going to take your virginity first. Yeah. A huge wow. group of guys. Okay, that does and sound I was like fourteen years old man mm-hmm. in high school. I was fourteen, but y'all are seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen years old betting on a fourteen-year-old's virginity. Crazy. It's a little wild. It's wild. Was and I, I didn't have social media in high school, so I I just think it's a lot more weird to have it now, especially with you. I don't think parents are aware that their sixteen-year-old daughter has Instagram, right? And Grown men are hopping in there. Everyone from your high school. Mm-hmm. It's just a little. Social media is dangerous. It's a dangerous game. You gotta have a be really hard headed, especially when you're younger. It's amazing how girls survive high school with that mentality. Like, geez, oh, the yeah. men are bidding on you for your. This just sounds like a weird tribal culture thing. It's like, like some like, cult shit. That's like so. <laughs> and what high school was that? If you don't mind me asking, um, Mountain View High School. Okay, so Logan was the same way. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, Logan was the the same way. Um. People from Logan, and I seen it. There were seniors that were looking at the freshmen coming in, yeah. and, you, and they would talk about, "Oh, that's the." Key. But it's just yeah. super freaking yeah. weird. It's but it's so normalized. Like I already knew, you know what I'm saying? Because when you're 14, like women mature, girls mature faster, like the physically boys, and yeah. mentally. Yeah, than they guys. do. They do. So you know, when I'm 14, I'm starting. I'm when I was 14, I weighed more than I weigh now. So I was thick, you know what I'm saying? Well, and so problem, I yeah. had all the seniors on my ass, and that shit was kind of, you know, weird. That's very weird. You're 14 years 14. old. Like, you, the year before you my were My sister 13. is 14 right now. You know what Two I'm saying? Two years ago, you were 12 years, years you were old. You were a kid. Exactly. You got your, your training bra at 12, right? Right. right. Yeah, I mean, you are just training. getting your period type shit. Uh, and and I and I and I'm gonna say it. Mm-hmm. Those seniors picked on those women because they were impressionable. Mm-hmm. Um, my best, uh, my a very good friend at the time, who I did like, who I knew in high school, we were close friends. Uh, she had dated someone older, and this guy was freaking weird. Like he was controlling, oh, yeah. um, over possessive, mm-hmm. and. My poor friend didn't know. You know, she's just oh, yeah. a nice. You're at 14. Like she was four, like you're a nice person at 14 well, yeah, you're being you know, manipulated like, by those men I, my first relationship the same boyfriend ex-boyfriend i've been talking about this whole time yeah i have a restraining order on him to this day yeah he went to jail mad times for beating my ass at 15 years oh old oh my god did it start right away or like no well see the thing so it always was, happens it, like they're smooth with it you're not just gonna <laughs> jump off the back and smack you your bitch for back, one right? day yeah, the at the back week. of the head hell not because you're gonna leave that you know what i'm saying like the ah. normal person you do it right away oh this is a crazy nigga so i'm finna dip but okay, interesting. you gotta be smooth with it you know what i'm so saying so domestic abuse can't happen till later in the relationship and that's when it it's becomes- all mind it's all mine. Like, you can, you know what I'm saying, be emotionally abusive, mentally abusive. You start with that. You have to, like, get them to love you first and want to be with you and think you're the only person they have. And then... Which can easily happen at 14 because you haven't uh, had that yeah. many experiences. You don't even... You don't love nobody. Every time you hook up with someone, like, this is it. And right. People, I don't like that. Now that I'm older, and listen, like, no, this is not it. Let's treat right. it like it's not it because it's right. probably not. Odds are saying it's not it. Yeah. So let's just get I there. I thought that we, was the love of my life. I was like, I'm gonna marry this man at 15. At 15. Like what? Nah. But that's what girls picture at. Like guys picture like hitting a home run, and girls picture their wedding. Right. right? Exactly. Is that so prevalent? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I still want to get married to this day. By who I have. And you no envision clue. your wedding. Oh yeah, I know exactly what dress I'm wearing and where you're doing it. Yep, my bouquet, everything, honeymoon. You went over your words. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> Not that close yet, but yeah. But it's like that. Mm-hmm. It's such a weird dichotomy with men and women because men are trying to pretty much procreate. We would like to right. 
And I, and I think it's a territorial thing with women. Like, it's a possession mm-hmm. thing. It's a possessive thing. Don't talk to my chick. Don't talk to other men. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, that's why you got baby mamas and girlfriends and the second baby mama and the other girlfriend fighting over their nigga on the internet every all day. Why do women do that? Why do... Because it's a territorial why, thing. Yeah, so... Is it, there's no pride in there to be like, nah, this is weird. We both fighting for the, no, I can't be that. They, mean, don't, they don't do that. They go, no, let's, let's, let's see where this thing ends up. Let's, no, let's people, be competitive. People, and, girls fight over their niggas all the time, physically. You know what I'm but saying? But it does value up the value of a man, right? Well, is I that think what it is men are all, are all ego driven. You're either going to be the woman that strokes his ego or breaks his ego. Absolutely. Personally, I break niggas' egos. That's why. It's fun to do as, not a, as a woman. It's very enjoyable. I love because it. Because you guys can't physically overpower men. And, right. And that's something I, I mean, women love saying something that just knifes through our heart. Yeah. Right? I <laughs> mean, I think for me, I just love it when a guy tries to manipulate me or gaslight me. And I'm personally the narcissist in the relationship. So I see right through that shit. How do they manipulate? Can you give us an example? They'll try. I mean, guys, you know what I'm saying? They be smooth talking. They are good with their words. Good guys, you know what I'm saying? Guys are built up since they're little. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, I could never have a guy come over to my house, but your dad and your mom will be like, nah, bring her over. Bring her over if you're a guy. Like, it's two different things. Like, it's you're raised two different completely ways. So men are like... Just like you said, men are born to procreate, literally. So we I it. don't look at any man different because he cheated on his bitch and fucked a different bitch. That's what the fuck you're supposed to do, if I'm being honest. You're supposed to have as many kids as you can, and is that's how men work. So you don't find it a, a bad thing that men have kids in a previous relationship? That doesn't phase you? Um, Like, if a guy has kids, and then I'm, like, the girlfriend or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I love baby daddies, personally. Um, that's my type. Okay. But I don't look for baby daddies. I hate it though because you attract them. Possibly, I right? definitely attract them. Um, yeah, and you're only terrible. twenty. I'm only twenty, but there's guys that be having kids at sixteen. So if they're twenty two now, they got a what? A, a six year old? Yeah. Well, and it depends on how involved they are in the life because a lot of usually they're not very they're involved. They're not very involved. The moms in there, the grandma, or it's the grandma, the mom. The mom. I mean, I have, man, even the moms these days sometimes, some of them. They wild as hell. That's that's why that's the reason why these kids are wild. Yeah. I actually grew up with those moms. Right. They're, they're crazy. Yeah, it's kind of. Kids are crazy now. I don't know why there's so many, um, why it's so normalized, baby daddies and baby mamas. But you see it, though. It's I very, see, oh, it's, 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 it's not. there. And I, I, I think in my era, it was almost like, that's a bad thing. You know, right. I don't want to deal with that. It was, right. But now women almost find it like, oh, because a woman found you attractive enough to have a kid with, that must mean you're 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 worth something. Yeah, well, there's a lot of girls and guys that be trapping each other. You know what I'm saying? Trapping. Yeah, that's each what other. that's what they call is it. Is that what the kid is about? Um, well, it's like for example, like let's say you're fucking with a rapper and he, you know, oh yeah, nuts in you. Okay, that's oh, beneficial yeah. as a woman if this rapper got all this money and I have his kid. Even if we're not together, you're paying me. Girls think like that. Do do women have conversations in that in, in circles? In yeah, circles it's like disgusting. It's but disgusting. That's what they do. <laughs> it's really and then they talk about like in a joking way that guys do about the technique about how to go and bag a rapper. Like when you heard when Drake put Tabasco sauce in yes, the condom. Yes, very smart. Smart man. But you know why he did that? Because he had his son that he probably didn't want. So now he knows he got to move different. Because he had the son exposed. Yeah. Well, he the, hid the, the white son. son, right? Yeah. Yeah. The little blonde boy, he's so cute. He's yeah. Cute. Looks just like Drake's mom. Why do you think he hid him? Because um, he's not obviously with the woman. That would Yeah, he's not with the woman. Drake is a huge, he's a legend. He's been rapping for years now. I'll be forgetting some of his songs are from, you know, when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, he has been around a you while know? now. So him oh, having a kid, you know. Publicity is not all publicity is good. As much as they try to say like bad publicity is still good publicity, it's not. Depending on how, who you are and where you are in the industry, him having a kid with a random what is she like an artist from? Who I don't knows know. Where? She seems like we nothing. don't know who she, she just is. seems like a girl she met over in Cease. Europe. Exactly. And it would be like no one's gonna know about her. She's in a small. Men villa. love to do that. Why do you think men go to Jamaica and the islands so much? To be Africa, weird. they got families over there. Yeah. That's yeah, rare, that's I'm true. sure I got some siblings and, and, and families that don't have social media exactly. or the internet. Or yeah, and sometimes <laughs> those families don't even know how big like of a person they are in the states. You know, 
Mm. So it's like, yeah, there's plenty of uh, black and uh, ethnic, you know, Africans, men that yeah. have families in other countries for sure. Does seem like a thing you're going to go do if you have the money. Right. Right. Like yeah. you're going to go have a, like a family in another country, yeah. which I'm not going to lie because the dating scene's so crazy in the Bay. I felt like oh, I've dated God. women, my era, women actually as old as you. Right. Uh, it's like getting worse, and like yeah. you find comfort almost. We're digging for the trash can for. I, real. I meet women overseas. It's a. I don't know if you feel the same way about men from overseas, but it's almost refreshing. Oh, it is. I mean, I'm a first generation American, so I'm used to the men overseas. Okay, and so well, you're you're first. Okay, yeah. Are you Barbados? I'm Arab. Arab. We're from my family's from Morocco. Oh, yeah. My dad was born in East France, though he barely speak English type shit. Right. Yeah. He um. So he has different morals, and the way they move overseas is completely different. Like Absolutely. it's in our culture, it's expected that he has multiple wives. Like that's a normal thing. So a Moroccan culture, yeah, an Arab culture. R- really? Yeah. How does that go? Men down? are like over women. Like so women are like less than children. I've seen it in Asian culture. Yeah, my mom was, you know. Treated a certain way, we couldn't really right. defend her. And shit. Exactly, it was, it was you got to shut your yeah, mouth. Yeah, my dad was almost like. Um, like you know do it too or yeah. something and i was like no that's you know yeah no yeah so um yeah that's how they work they, your uh, dad's moroccan he's from morocco yeah. so you guys eat moroccan food still and all that mm. very cultural yeah he's he's it's funny though because my mom's just like a white woman from montana and then i was raised in the bay mostly so it's kind of how do they meet they met in riverside they live in the same apartment complex okay. they met in la yeah yeah, all those beautiful Live in the same apartment complex. Beautiful type relationships shit. happening. That's so beautiful. beautiful. A lot of uh, migrants come to LA. Yeah, you know for sure. And then it's like have... New York, DC, and Los Angeles. Yeah, very much so. Where we very are much. So. Have you been to New York yet? I have not. Okay, I was just in DC though recently. Wild and Out is shot in LA. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's where you're at. Yeah. Okay. I want to talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Thank you for t- touching on that because men are. Super fucking creepy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. women are kind of catching up in a sense. Well, um, these days we we kind of switch the philosophy on them. Like men, men are, more, are acting like bitches and bitches are acting like And women like are more manly. Oh yeah. We well, not manly, you cold. know what I mean, but more like yo. Yeah. Like I've been called bruh a lot by pretty girls in the bay. Yeah. And it's that's so... the Bay Area thing. So though. do women do that to be unromantic and be like yo like don't holler at me is that why they say bro or are they just saying bro to say because i feel like women are saying that like yo don't get at me oh no i think personally or they bro used it? to be in my vocabulary so much i would call my own nigga bro like bro did you hear about blah blah blah, blah? are you gonna someone that you like mm-hmm. and you see him in public unless it's a social setting it's a friend of a friend and, right. and you find him super attractive are you gonna call him bro no. Ah. I'm not. Okay, so that's like I'm not where just I'm like I'm not going like, to call a, a dude I'm interested in brother, you know, or fam. Like I'm not going to if I like you, I'm not for so these are those signs, words. right? When a woman does like you, she's not going to use the word bruh or fam. I would hope they- not. Unfortunately, the bay lingo is so congested. It's yes, yeah, like that, a woman might use that. So Yeah, I term, definitely yeah. called People I like, bruh. It's just part of our vocabulary, you yeah, know? Yeah. It's, it's like babe, bruh. It's so Baby, not bruh. like babe. It's it's it shouldn't it's so be, like, but it's like <laughs> it's so not like babe. Um, Andrew Tate has been getting a oh, lot God. of press lately. So you're familiar because the last guest I had on um wasn't familiar, so it was like, uh, because I really wanted right. and it was a great clip, so this might be a clip too, but mm-hmm. so he, this one particular clip he goes to say uh, there's women out there that say they don't need a man. Right. But it, he just, it was a really funny clip. He was like, well, with the car you're driving in is <laughs> built by a man. That only phase, that only fans page account you have is made by a man. All your uh, clients are men. You're, you know, when the world goes to shit, do you agree with any of that? Is this like becoming, and this is kind of what we touched on earlier, like women these days, they don't need a man or is Andrew Tate full of shit or is there some truth to that? Or I think Andrew Tate is speaking his truth 
to what he knows and mm-hmm. what he believes in. Right. Um, personally, Andrew Tate wouldn't have been born without a woman, so we could go Ooh. there too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but then again, that woman wouldn't have been pregnant without a man. So if you really want to get super particular, sure, we could break it down like that, but that's nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I've subscribed to OnlyFans before. I'm a woman. So really? I could be paying a girl's OnlyFans. Yeah. Why? Girls is hot. And I'm not even gay for real, but like the content they be making is, you know, sometimes cool or you just want to be supportive or. And girls use it like Etsy. Like I might use that one. Right. Yeah. But I I mean, car built by a man, like what? Okay. Isn't this world created by a man if we're being, you know what I'm saying? Like if you want to get into it like that, sure. But I don't know. I don't think, uh, I think women would love to say they don't need a man, just how men would love to say they don't need a woman. But if we want to really break it down, I think everybody needs each other. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. I think it's a little truth to both ends. Right. Um, Women these days, they kind of don't need a man. I'm just going to be they don't. Yeah. They Not don't. in this generation. I mean, because to Andrew Tate, like, I need a man, too. I need a Tesla, too. Right. <laughs> I, <was built> by, <laughs> right. I don't want a man, necessarily, but right. I need men as much help as women do. But Right. Um, it's, it, I do feel with the pronouns and the genderless and the mm-hmm. thing, women are by far way more independent than they've ever been. Oh and, yeah. But it's, I'm not going to lie. It's led to a lot of men being soft. Oh my God. Lord, I agree. So I know women's thing is like, okay, we would like to have more rights, but we didn't necessarily want you guys more soft. Yeah. You know, like they still want that struggle, I feel like, of you being a manly man. And they just would like to complain about it still. Yeah, I think. Um, right? Like you'd rather have your man more manly than be more for compliant. Sure. Compliant? Mm. Mm. I don't know. Personally, I am the alpha in anything I do. In most relationships you've been in. Yes. Okay. However, but that's only just 20, my, so that I'm change. only 20, but that's also just my personality. Right. And it's because no man has been masculine enough or or uh, dominant enough for me to go and be submissive. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, so right. if we're in a room and we're filling each other out and you're, I'm naturally going to be dominant. That's just how I am. But if your dominance overpowers mine and I have respect for you, I'm going to submit to you for sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? My father is Muslim. I know how to submit to a man. It's not hard, but you yeah. have to be worthy of that. Yes. And that's where and you- a man enough. <laughs> These these niggas be bitches these days. A lot like, of men aren't aware of a woman being submissive or how to get to that point. Well, right? I don't think like, a lot of women are submissive these days. I think oh. men have dr- driven us over the boat ten times, so we're over that. Yeah. Um. I also think in the Bay Area, women don't have that mindset. We're built to hustle and survive out here. So no, we're not going to be soft little girls. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Women kind of talk back more and speak up more yeah. and say that's not right more. Right. You, you, I mean, a lot of times you see him say something, you're like, damn, she might get hit. Right, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. She's coming off but like the, a man. She might right also now. hit first. You know what I'm saying? And like, girls that's, hit harder than they used to. Yeah. I see Well, I think we got machine. a little bit more aggression in us these days. Girls have a lot more aggression these days. It seems yeah. Like, because of social media, what they see, they, they see how they get disrespected. Yeah. I mean, girls are quick to fight each other. So, all the events right. that I've thrown, because I used to be a promoter, and I still am, mm-hmm. uh, but more concert events, like the pay right. play games. That's dope. Yeah, so it's not the guys that start the fights. It's all I've had like four fights in my whole era, and they were all started by women. Oh yeah, they were all started by women. I think uh, women are very competitive in yeah. spirit. Yeah, just and like how men want to be the alpha male, y'all want to be the alpha woman. But it's different. Like guys just want to be cool now, and I see it. Like yeah. they see each other. I'm at the gym. When we play basketball, it's super soft. Yeah, I think guys are hella yeah. cool. I like guys. I love are guys. super cool each other. It's like guys brother, brother, chill. brother. Um, but girls, it don't really seem like no. sister, sisters. It don't seem like. Well, that. it's not even that. Like, let's say you're gonna go to a party, right? Like, I'm going to ask what other bitches are going to be there. Type shit. Yeah, I noticed girls. And ask I don't have beef with anybody. You don't, and because you just don't want to be there. And you're going to look really smug at each other. You're going to look at each other. And friends are going to get involved. Exactly. And that's the worst part I see with women is the friends get absolutely involved. Women are very loyal. You know to, what I'm saying? To that sense, right? Yeah, of in that another sense. Girl when it comes to your friends and, and your family. And not liking other girls. Yeah. Like, I'm not I'm not a confrontational person. But best believe if someone's coming for my friend, I'm going to jump in that for right, sure. Right, I see it quick. And men right. are almost like... No, nah, I don't nah, want to get involved. Nah, break it up, bro. Break it up. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, girls aren't shooting each other and men are. 
Exactly. Well, if we want right? to get deep into it, there's still gangs, yeah. gangs fighting and shooting each other all the time. Absolutely. But men are kind of like it's either gonna be done like they're, men don't like the drama part. They're gonna handle it, so they're either gonna well, shoot some, that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Most most men, most men, real men, most hopefully. men that are in gangs that are active are yeah. gonna be no. Or just street niggas. They're right. gonna finish that shit. They get props for being active. Exactly. So. Whether a woman feed off drama, unfortunately, they love drama. They love it. I mean, there's not Thank much. Thank you for admitting yeah. it. They love drama, yeah. don't they? Love, they love I start- hate drama, but I ain't going to lie. That shit interesting as fuck. Like, but I so wanna- like my girl, like my, not my girl, but like women that I've been with. Right. You just, like now I'm at the age where I know you're just starting an argument. Yeah. <laughs> but as a young man, I didn't get it. Right. I didn't understand that she's trying to give you conflict to see how you deal with it. Do women do that? Like, uh, I don't. Um, okay. okay. I don't like conflict because I'm crazy for real, like real crazy. So there's already going to be conflict. Then. Not even that, but conflict is going to turn into chaos, mm-hmm. and that's how I grew up in chaos. So I'm, that usually. shit is going to be not end well. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I'm mature. A lot of girls and women these days are, aren't as mature as they try to come off. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I don't. I wouldn't say that they like test them, but I think. Girls get bored, and you know. So, when you're bored, you start some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like people yeah. don't know how to be bored and chilled out these days. Where guys prefer guys walk in the room chill, girls walk in the room with a stank face on. You I know? feel like there's stuff that they just kind of underlyingly do just to stir up the shit. So yeah. Like give a guy a look, even though she's not into one, but she wants to piss off the other guy. Right. Or, they they love entertainment. I Enter, think yeah, entertainment. Part, part of why entertainment was I mean, created. Yeah, there's I think, Bad Girls you know? Club. You know what I'm saying? There's all these different reality shows where it's just girls bickering and fighting. You don't see guys shows of just bickering and fighting. No, no. It's like Sex in the City, but just with arguing and like, right. reality mixed in. Exactly. Mental health is um, a huge thing right now because I'm very motivated. So I don't. I haven't felt depression in a long time. Like I just That's I good. almost didn't get it, but. I'm very selfish for saying that because like always accomplishing something every year will 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 fight that, right? But all the artists I dealt with, I get a healthy dose of their depression. Oh yeah. You know, because one, they're they're working or they're selling drugs or they're doing whatever they do to get their studio time. Right. And then they have to pay an absorbent amount of money for studio time. Studio and time, it, cameras, directors, they got to pay the models. Hopefully, y'all are paying the models, please. And they try to get over on the models, right? right? With I mean, exposure. a lot goes into yeah. rapping, especially if you're just starting up, for sure. And it sacrifices time with their family and friends. Yeah. Um, Kids. They have to buy good clothes to look good. Yeah. It's a very costly thing. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you get this recognition for it. And it's almost felt like it's undeserved, right? Right. And then when it goes away, is when the real depression <laughs> sets in. Yeah. And it's just fucked up. But with social media, it's 20 times worse. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of depression comes from comparing your life to someone else. Oh, yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. Right? Mm-hmm. People, uh, they post their best lives. So, I mean, there's been times, like, for example, I know I'm beautiful, but I've had to take social media breaks because every time I open my phone, you see the baddest bitch with the biggest BBL and the nicest perfect tea, even though I got a nice smile, you know what I'm saying? They got the veneers, new hair every fucking five days. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're very presentable and you start on your Instagram. Com- yeah, like, you yeah. start comparing yourself to that. But that's what women do. They don't even, yeah. like, look at, like, well, look at you. Oh, that's great. But then, like... You'll just look at the next thing, right? Yeah. And be like, oh, she's more exotic looking or she's right. a bigger butt. Or, or something. Or something. Yeah. That, that fucks with women. Yeah, I think it fucks with our head a lot. I don't think a lot of girls realize, like, you need to get off social media sometimes. It's not healthy. And mind you, a lot of girls don't really look like that in real life. You know what I'm of saying? Of course, yeah. Or they, you know. If, she, if, if you're going to Instagram and you're looking extra hard yeah. because she's... Pre- that's because she did something super. You cannot expect right. her to look like that coming out of the bathroom when right. she takes a shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's really easy to feel down on social media. Everyone's posting their best versions of themselves, their best life. You know what I'm saying? Guys doing it too. Guys posting Hell money yeah. or accomplishments, and, yeah. and we feel it as a man. Yeah. Like this man is accomplishing something. Right. I haven't done anything today. Like right. Even me who accomplished stuff, I have a building, own a business. I'll look at other people and just feel like, oh, 
Right. That guy's doing it. Right. <laughs> you know, or he knows those people and they seem cool and I don't know them. Or right. It's, yeah. It's the dumbest shit. Yeah. It, with like this era, I've met more people I've ever known combined in the years that I've grown up without social media. Right. I know way more people than I would have, but yet we That's almost same. feel depressed knowing them. Yeah. Because, you know what I mean? I think it will. It's like, I'll see, for example, yesterday, like I was scrolling on Instagram and I'm like, okay, you know, I, I got my friend posting bad photos okay comment under them okay random girls i don't know okay let me post a photo now i need to post a photo right so i go post a hot ass photo okay now my shit's blowing up okay perfect i can go to sleep now <laughs> did that you know what i'm saying and i had I, to put in my little two cents real quick and i noticed something women do with those photos is that you only comment back at the women commenting back right uh, i don't comment about any i don't comment back okay, okay. to anybody All right. i don't like it but um, you don't I, like I, commenting. Back? I like I, I like the comment. You know, like the little heart. Oh, you like it. Uh, I okay. used to thank everybody, but that shit is ridiculous now. And I think once you kind of like, you know, get a little bigger up there in the industry, you like someone it's, do it for you, right? Not even do it for you, but it's not really practical to respond to everybody because half the pe these people are fans. I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? It's I'm not crazy, gonna put a I red do. heart back. Like I don't know you, dude. You know, but I'll like it. I'll show them that I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they swipe up on my stories and say something, I'll say thank you or, you know, something That's like good. that. It's a lot of work being responsive on social oh, yeah. media. It's oh, super. yeah. But it pays off. It pays I, off. I've had influencers that were like 100K and all, and then they responded back to me. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. But I was thinking, like, you had to have paid someone to do that. There's no way you're doing that. I There's mean, no a lot way. of people There's have no social way. media managers. Yeah. But that's like when you're really big, you know? I think you have to when you're that big. Oh, yeah. Because you're busy. You don't got time. Um, and I found you on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, very presentable, by the way. Thank you. Um, I want to talk to you about the wild and out thing. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> um, so did they find you? Yeah. They found you. Mm -hmm. Okay. It wasn't Nick Cannon like no. DMing you. Uh, no. Man, the amount of people <laughs> <laughs> my of shit people said like don't be don't be his 12 baby mama uh, like shit like that nah does he, he hit okay, I'm not gonna, no he don't he, he, don't, he doesn't he even hit on the wall because that'd be like so stupid right because he he's just, a professional right. i'll give him that he is he takes his business very seriously and you met him personally yeah multiple times before the show and uh -huh. okay. we pray before every show i heard he does that yeah, we do a huge group prayer with Justina, DC, everybody, and all the Wild and Out girls, all the production crew. Okay, how was it like? So, what was the whole form like? They they contacted you. They, yeah, it's a casting agent. They only want people in LA. Uh, no. So this, what I got booked for was a Wild and Out tour. So it was a nation tour. Yeah, I'm too young to be a Wild and Out girl. I think you got to be 21. Okay. Yeah, which I'll okay. be 21 in May. So you know that's coming up. But right. um, yeah, it was a tour. I did a few shows. Um, it was dope. It was. Definitely an experience, but yeah, with every production. So what is it like to give you the clothes backstage? Yeah, so basically, um, once you get like the the casting agent will be like, you know, they want to book you for this, yada yada. Like, are you available or interested? And you say yes, I'm interested. Um, and then, because basically, what what I believe a casting agent does is they submit the girls. You know, they have like on their roster, casting agents have different rosters. They got their photos and your name, your measurements and shit lined up. They'll ask you if you're interested. You're interested. They send it back. If they say yes to you, okay. Th then they give you, like, your dialogue, like, all the details, uh, what the you're dialogue. being booked for. Okay. Yeah, okay, maybe dialogue yes. wasn't the right word, but they'll send you, like, a list of all the details, like times, dates. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, gotcha. Like, what you need to wear, bring to set, or whatever. Um, and then you roll in backstage. you got to go through, like, two different security points mm, with your name and that's shit. That's cool. Yeah, you can't bring <laughs> nobody with you. Uh, that's even cool. It makes you feel right. like it's legit. Exactly. Yeah. It's definitely a legit production. Yeah. Um, what was we were at the MGM Grand at one show wow. in Las Vegas. Wow. That shit was, man, that shit was annoying to get to, though. You had to walk through, like, the whole MGM. It's just a pretty to get, long walk. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, which is, yeah. And mind you, I just got off a PJ, off a private jet, and I was, like, late. And you cannot be late and shit like that. But the PJ was late, so I couldn't really do nothing about it. So but, MTV provides that, the private jet? No. That was just you. That was me. I was okay. able to uh, figure that out. Social media, that yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, you did. Yeah, hell okay. yeah. That was my first say. private yeah. jet, so I was like, <laughs> I'm for surely uh, taking a couple flicks. That had to feel pretty lit. Oh, it was definitely coming off a private jet into the strip. Into oh the yeah, MGM Grand mm -hmm. doing a wild and out show. Yeah, and then um, 
yeah, I was late, so they weren't going to let me perform at that show. Mm. But luckily, one of the casting agents who works directly with MTV um, was like, nah, you finna get up on here. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, thank God, because I did not fly to Vegas on a private jet for no reason. You know what I'm saying? They were like, you could watch the show, and then they let me do on it. So That was God. cool. Yeah. That's life. But yeah, you, you um, do all this to get ready. You get there, and they might not even have you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And then, yeah. Um, yeah, so once you're backstage, there's a... You know, there's different rooms. So the Wild and Out girls have their own room where they get ready. You'll get your outfit. It's always a different outfit. Every How time. are the girls? They were they were chill. They're cool. Like um, the Bay the Bay Area girls were cool. Um, I really liked them. Most of them were from the Bay. Some of them were from LA. Um, then Vegas was cool. They're a little bit different in Vegas. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. They're because kind of women from the international scene. Right. right? Yeah. yeah. And then. But most of the, like, I've worked with a bunch of different different models between different things I've done. The Bay Area models are, are probably my the favorite. Because we're cool people. Like, we're chill. We're genuine people. Yeah. And we're about it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Whether when you start working with some girls, no offense, Los Angeles, but when you start working with some models from L.A., you get the bird brain bitches. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like... <laughs> Please don't even talk to me because you're dumb in the heads, clearly. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're yeah. just slow. They're just pretty, but slow as fuck. I know what you mean because I've been out there in L.A., yeah. so yeah. Yeah, and then you got the rude girls who think they're better than everyone, which is crazy because we're all booked here because we look good. You know what I'm saying? So you think you look better than me is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. But there is that. Yeah, they, they oh, for sure. They are better than you, Yeah, right? yeah. And then there was a couple Wild and Out girls on the Las Vegas uh, show that were on the Wild and Out show already. So, the original girls. Yeah, so they were kind of, you could tell they felt a little bit above everybody else type shit. Right. Yeah. That but, hierarchy there. Yeah, but personally, I don't let that shit get to me, so it's like whatever. Yeah, it's but, just, you know. Yeah, but you definitely get some different mix of girls and energies. But meeting Nick was a cool experience, right? Oh, like, yeah. Meeting all of them. Justina was dope. You know, she said, I'm Justina. Ha- Justina's the redhead that always gets made fun of. Oh, the one that says, Ish me? I don't know what she, she does. That, the one that Bulu has an issue with. No, okay, no. Yeah, no, but okay. she's the redhead white girl on Wild and Out. The redheaded white girl. Yes. Okay, yeah, no, I know she's dope. It. I yeah. love her. She told me I was dope, like shit, like that. That I'm hella cool. Um, DC is cool. DC is hella funny. I just seen DC on Instagram. I didn't even know he had like DC a whole Young family. Fly. Yeah. 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 Uh, he's not on the show anymore, right? Like he's doing his own thing or something. I don't like no, I, I don't believe know. he is. Still on the show. Okay. Yeah. He's like doing a They a, don't a, run all year, so yeah. So I don't really know. Yeah. Nick Cannon's an amazing dude, bro. I he's mean, dope. He just and I think he does a lot on hands on on that show. Oh yeah. That's his um, show. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been his, his baby. show. Exactly. Like his mental product and everything. Exactly. It's a dope show. Yeah. And it's hard to do. Yeah, there's a lot that goes on. I mean, you have the the freestyles and the yep. and it's like in, in the live format. Yeah. That makes it ten times more difficult. Yeah. Like having to be right there and say right. it, you know. But yeah. the content you get out of it's just great. It's like improv. Yeah. Exactly. It's really dope. I enjoyed it for sure. It's comedy. Yeah. You know, but you got to keep a straight face as a wild and out girl. Like you got to be smiling and shit. But what's your deal with ten fifteen? Like you're not an artist, right? No. So how did you? What's the deal? Like are you signed on as a host or a no, personality? No, I'm signed as a model. As a model. So ten fifteen is a talent agency. So they have rappers, singers. Uh, they have photographer sign, model sign, content creator sign, DJ sign. Got you. Like they do it all. Got yeah. you. Oh, so you're part of that then? Okay, yeah. got you. I got you. Yeah. How is the modeling looking for 2023? Oh, it's looking great. Um, I got a lot of uh things that uh I got up my sleeve coming up. You got um, thing with Kevin Hart, right? Yeah. You've been touring with Kevin? Yeah, I've been touring. He did a reality check tour that I was a part of. Kevin he's Hart is too. amazing. He's hilarious. I, I love he think he's a little bit funnier than Nick, to be honest. He's funnier than Nick? Yeah. Of course he's funnier than Nick. He just well, short. Is Nick funny. Cannon funny? I didn't know for Nick Cannon even being funny. Yeah, Nick Cannon's funny, but he uh I don't it's know. It's a for little being, old now. You know well, what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, Kevin Hart is is fun. Like he does. Com- I don't know if Nick Cannon does comedy. Does he does does comedy stand up? I don't know. But I don't think he does stand up. But Kevin Hart, dude. Yeah. To be that consistent right. and active, yeah. that boy is active. He's hilarious. 
I met him backstage. He's short as hell. He's I didn't really even. Short. Oh my god, I'm five two and a half. I was wearing heels, mind you, because you know I was modeling for the uh, tour. But <laughs> if I only like four or five inch heels. You're taller than Kevin Hart. You're yeah, five two. He went to give me a high five, and I had to go down like this. Like I had to be like high five, Kevin, down here That's type funny. shit. Yeah. That is hilarious. But he's cool. What did he talk about? What did he talk oh, about? Yeah, did you guys talk for a little bit? Or? Uh, he had a a, a tequila. He has a, has a tequila brand. Yeah, he has a lot of brands yeah. right now. It's crazy. And so, um, I mean, that's what you got to do, though. Yeah. You know, especially when you're already He's so big, star. you can just make just like celebrities that have OnlyFans. That's yeah. just easy money for them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But um, his uh, we yeah, we were at a show the day before, and um, there's always after parties, so we had an after party. And not only do they was his tequila in the green room, but his te- they he brought his own bottles to the wow. after party for the bottle girls to hold up, and see, yeah, that shit had nice me promotion. fucked up. Oh, so the, I told his him, tequila had you fucked up. Yeah, so I told him backstage, I was like, "Hey, Kevin, I was like, yo, tequila had me fucked up," <laughs> and he said something like, "He was like." He said something funny, and then he gave me a high five, and then... He yeah. actually said something funny? Yeah. Okay, because comedians, when you see them in real life, they don't want to say anything funny. No, he's that's what I'm saying. He's a funny guy. Like, he it's is funny, just funny. because you see a comedian, they complain about that. Like, people right. will come up to you, and they expect you to say something funny, and it's yeah. like, the fuck, you, you just met me. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I think we've been at it for an hour now, right? Okay, we're probably approaching an hour. Um okay. I was fast. It was fast. <laughs> well, I mean, you're woke, man. There's a lot of good topics there. Right. I want to make in the clips. Um, thank you for coming on. Thank you for coming out from San Jose. We should probably bring you back next week. Oh, really yeah. I'm mad. I'll be here anytime. Everything. I love to talk. I can see. <laughs> it was a great conversation. Anything you want to tell for 2023? You got coming up plans we should watch out for, things like that. Oh, I got a really big uh, Playboy campaign coming up. Yeah, so talk about the sure Playboy y'all. thing. Is yeah, it, what is that? Is so, Hugh Hefner? Um, Are you talking to Hugh? Like- <laughs> I wish. There's a huge uh, Playboy campaign contest. It's a contest. And so you have to be, like, accepted into the contest, you know what I'm saying, based on, like, credibility and your looks and stuff. Right. Basically, whoever ends up winning the contest, and I mean, this is out of thousands and thousands of girls. Whoever wins the contest wins $25,000, and they're going to be the head model for their new lingerie campaign. And personally, like... You're past a couple of rounds, right? Uh, I've passed five rounds. Five rounds. So I'm I'm in one of the finalist rounds right now. So that's y'all huge. make sure y'all stay tuned on my Instagram so y'all could keep voting for me. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's dope. I'm surprised Definitely I'm, vote for you. I'm, that's, yeah. that's big, and I hope you yeah. get it, Playboy. Thank you. Um, God, it's so. It would change. It would be life changing. So. Legendary. Mm-hmm. They've been. Wow. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. It's crazy, man. <laughs> Playboy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Playboy's a too huge much about thing. Play- Playboy's a huge thing. <laughs> it's the been classiest too. nude magazine out. Right. And that's like an. Like play- I get Playboy props because, I mean, they're a nude magazine, right. but. Before they were kind of known for being classy, I, I wonder how he navigated that. You know? Oh, I think like, it, that was difficult, right? Because when Playboy started, yes, sex was not talked about like that. Like that was and crazy. It's very accepted the logo. Yep. I mean, you see it on like scarves and little yep. head wrap things. Girls got a Playboy bunny on their ass. Yeah, it's you like, go to strip club, see at least five girls with that on them. And maybe one thing close in that industry that's that popular right. in that in that sense, but a Playboy right. bunny, Hugh Hefner. Or the row, right? Um, I find it crazy that girls sought to be a Playboy bunny, like they want to be a Playboy, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. because it's the classiest one. That's where all the famous people yeah. go to as well exactly. when they get naked. So. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's a good thing, man. Yeah. You have to create a good thing there, man. Oh yeah, he he, he uh, brilliant. Here. Yeah, added class to the naked. Which is being naked is a classy thing, you know. I, guess. I mean, yeah. I think you could easily fuck it up and look ratchet. It's and easy trashy. to make it look raunchy, right? Exactly. Well, that's where it takes a real model. You get what I'm saying? Right. To uh, know how to be nude or even semi nude and make that shit look nice and classy. Not, not want, everyone can do that. Well, that's the thing I want to say. Don't you get approached by a lot of photographers that want to shoot you for free? But yeah, I mean, I've never paid a photographer to shoot me. Because they all want to shoot, right? Yeah. But it's just funny to me because most women end up shooting themselves better than a photographer yes. that's male. Yes. Do you notice that? Yeah, I because mean. Because these male photographers just want to shoot you. They don't know yeah. if they want to shoot you. Yeah, well. Right? Like, there's a difference, A lot right? of photographers want to just be in your face if you're a pretty girl. I mean, you can Speak tell easily from, the, your Insta, from their Instagram profile um, what type of ph- photographer you're working with. Um, there's a lot of photographers who really just want to fuck you. Um, do, they, and, do they say it? 
no, but they'll like lead it on type shit. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? There's definitely men photographers I had to get up out of there real quick. Um, no way. Yeah, there's photographers who like go behind your back and use your photos for their only fans. Yeah, like make them try to make money off of you. There's a lot of like raunchy photographers okay, out okay. there. Okay, well that's slimy. That's why like now when I do like when I shoot for my portfolio, like I have a certain select male photographers or female photographers I work with. You got female photographers go a little bit better, right? Female photographers Are know, they? know the woman body. Right, and so, the angle. The angle. I think because that's my issue with male photographers is like they're just shooting. Right. You know, and I know it's with women. They do this when they do a selfie. Right. Like these little there's subtle ass angles. little. And definitely. that taught me to shoot women better. Yeah. Because. Um, and all women's bodies are different. Yeah. So you really do have to know. But there's like, for example, Art by Black. Like, I love him. He knows exactly what the fuck to do. But that's right. something he learned. It's not natural for men to know I how to capture. It too. A, you know what I'm saying? I literally. So my the, the camera on my GH4, the, the window turns around. And okay. I literally be like. Move right the camera for me you right know what i mean because yeah. you know your angle better right and it teaches me because a lot of men that just are trying to fuck i noticed they they shoot really bad pictures oh like, yeah it's just a it's straight, straight on, shot you got her angle all fucked up the cheeks look like this right. like you gotta make them turn a little bit you turn right. with it and like looking at their selfies will give you a really good yeah. perspective on how to shoot them yeah but not even you know? that there's a lot of uh models who also don't know what they're doing but those are like freelance models you know what i'm saying those are so annoying because i get a lot of those on video shoots yeah and you know they want to get drunk yeah yeah they're just there to see the rappers and be the you know have the experience whether i'm there to work you know what i'm saying it's super hard to look comfortable as a model well i'm not saying it is but just (laughs) for the ones that are good they end up making it look really easy oh yeah comfortable yeah man girls look so stiff yeah and they're not well there's easy ways to pick out who's really a model who's not you know what i'm saying and the ones that just jump into it yeah i noticed the ones that i just i say and they jump right and they give me what boom you're a professional yep the other ones i'm like well, I didn't even envision it like that. Or, I don't know, I just say something that'll just really throw you off yeah. your mood and your energy. Yeah, well, you're personally, just like, like, I was just talking about this with one of my other model friends. Like, as a model, you're supposed to know what the fuck you're doing. Just like the photographer is supposed to know what the fuck they're doing. The photographer is not supposed to tell the model what to do and how to move. Just like I'm not supposed to tell the photographer yeah. how to shoot me. You know I what I'm saying? I have told women how to pose, and that's the most demasculated thing for me it's, it's annoying but i'm like Turn well, to i the know left. it looks sexy though, so do out. that like, you know she and should be able to know how to do that already it's wild you feel bad for yeah. a boyfriend no. all, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh nana finesse i super appreciate you coming on the show today no problem um create studios podcast 63 yeah she came out of san jose for this in the crazy ass rain i appreciate you yes thank you for having me we are out of here <laughs> oh, wait. Long beat.